Well, hello and boom shakalaka. Rob Hamilton from Soul Canyon Training and Development here with another Excel Essentials Level Up tip. This particular tip is a combination of a bunch of different skills that I've taught at various times in, in Excel Essentials tutorials and other level up tips. And it just kind of brings a bunch of things together to show you what can be possible once you've learned a bunch of these different skills. What I have here is I have a timesheet. And the way I present this when I teach a live Excel class is that when people first join our company, for a very short period of time, about a week, uh, they just put in their time in and their time out. Their hours are calculated until they're actually up on our timekeeping system where they can use time cards like everyone else. Now, obviously, a timekeeping system, when you uh, clock in or clock out, it uses the time the clock actually says it is when you clock in or clock out. Uh, when you do it this way, it's just kind of relying on the honor system of people being able to put their time in and their time out. So when I present this, it's usually to teach the data validation uh, skill in Excel, which is creating lists of drop-down lists that people have to choose from in order to put stuff in cells. And invariably, somebody in the class will say, but is that really, really realistic? Is that the way you would really do a timesheet? My answer is always no. Uh, and then I go on to describe to them how I'd actually do it. What I'd actually do is have someone click in their cell, uh, do a little formula that would record the actual time it is, or close enough based on, this, uh, on these lists here. So right now, if you look at my computer clock, I'm actually recording this at 12.39 p.m. If someone were to clock in at 12.39 p.m., my clock-in list, 12.39 p.m., is actually after my last clock-in time. So I'd want that to be noon. So what I'd want somebody to do is to click into a cell, do something that would actually uh, uh, go to this list, realize the time is currently after the last possible check-in time, and so use the last possible check-in time. Now, if someone was checking out, I'd want it to come out and come over to this list and say, okay, it's after 12, it's after 12.15, it's after 12.30, but it's not 12.45 yet, so use 12.30 on the list, and I'd want that to automatically be put in the list. So here's what I've done. I've actually written a formula here that's the if function, and what the if function here is going to do is the logical test is going to say, okay, look, if the time that it is right now, so that's a time function, taking out the date value of today, so that's the way you have to do it to just to get the time piece, is less than this starting time right here, then use this starting time right here. That's what F2 is. Otherwise, if the current time, which is what this expression is right here, is greater than the last time on the list, which is noon, then go ahead and use the last time on the list. Otherwise, what you have is you have a time, in this case, that's between 7 a.m. and noon. So in that case, use this vertical lookup function to go find now, which is the current time, on this list, and then bring back the value from that list uh, that is closest to the time that it is right now. That's what this whole VLOOKUP function does. So that's what I have for time in. What I have for time out is the same thing, but it's just referencing this time out list over here. So what I'd want them to do, now obviously I don't want somebody to have to come in and have to recreate this whole thing right here. I have actually created it as a little function module. What I've done is I've named that function module right here, right up here in the name box, clock in. I've named this function module clock out. Now this is getting within the realm of something that I could expect somebody to do. I could expect them to come up and click in here and say equals clock in. Now clock in is a range name. That's what that little name tag means right there. So if I just double click on that, that's in there, and then press enter. Since it's currently now 12.42 p.m., it's after the last time on the list for a clock in time, so it's going to use 12 p.m. Now, as far as clock out, I could say equals clock out. Go ahead and press enter on that. And it would say 12.30 p.m. because it's not yet to 12.45. So 12.30 p.m. is the last time it was 
before it approached the next threshold level on the VLOOKUP list. So these two things are working. Now the problem with leaving them like this, clock in refers to this, clock out refers to this, is that these now functions and today functions are dynamic. So these would continue to change all along while the clock moved throughout the day. Like in two minutes here, this thing would switch if I hit a refresh or a recalculate to 1245. I don't want it to do that. Once that time is in there, I want to freeze it. So here is what they would have to go ahead and do in addition to putting clock in in this cell and clock out in that cell when they clocked out. They would have to say, okay, now right click, copy that, and immediately right in that same space, right click, paste special, just the value. And that's going to can actually convert it to a time now. So that won't change. Over here, I would go right click, copy, and then right click, paste special values. And now, if you look right there in that time in and right there in that time out, those are now because they were paste special valued, time that will not change. I can't expect my new employees with little to no Excel skills to do all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write a macro that's going to do all that. Now, the macro is going to have to be able to run from wherever they click. I'm going to want them to click into a cell. I'm going to write a macro that I'm going to attach to this button for clock in. And then I'm going to write a macro that I'm going to attach to this button for clock out. Here's how that would work. I've got my macros buttons up here on my QAT along with the relative referencing button right here. I've gone ahead and clicked that so that when I record this particular macro that does all that, that is put clock in in the cell, right click copy, right click pay special values, that it will adjust to whatever cell I'm in when I actually run the macro. So here's how that would work. I'm going to click in this cell right here and I'm going to record a macro and I'm going to call it clock in. I'm going to go ahead and not give it a keyboard shortcut key, save it in this workbook and click OK. Now I'm recording equals clock in. Enter. Right click, copy, right click, paste special values. Hit escape to get rid of the scrolling marquee and stop recording. Over here, record macro. We're going to go ahead and call it clock out. I'm not going to give it a keyboard shortcut key. I am going to save it in this workbook. Click OK. Now, equals clock out. Right click, copy, right click, paste special values, and then we're going to go ahead and hit escape to get rid of the scrolling marquee and stop recording. Now let's test to see where the macros work. The way I'm going to do that is click into a cell, go up to view macros, Here's clock in and clock out, the two macros I just created. So I'm going to select clock in and click run. It works. Over here in this other cell, I'm just going to click in a different cell than the one I recorded in. I'm going to go up to view macros, select clock out and run it. It works. So the last thing I'm going to do is take these buttons down here and I, I think I went ahead and did this uh, previous to this, so let's, let me just show you. I created the buttons using the insert shape. I just grabbed one of these buttons and I drew it, and then I made it look really good. Uh, but now I'm right-click on the button, assign macro, and what I've assigned is the clock in macro to that particular button. Right-click on that button, assign macro, and I've assigned the clock out macro to that button. So now I click OK. Let's go ahead and wipe out those times and see if somebody could just come in here like Randy. Click in that, hit clock in, click in that button, hit clock out.
and we're all good. So that's a bunch of things all combined just to show you some of the capabilities of how you can put these things together. Now look, that was a lot of stuff. So if you have any questions at all about that or you think any aspect of that might be usable and you didn't get it all, you of course can stop and rewind and go over this thing uh, as many times as you want, this particular level up tutorial. All of these different components of everything I just taught are on my Excel Essentials training program, which you can go out to www.soulcanyon.com, uh, check out the program, pick up a copy if you'd like, or feel free to drop me an email to rob at soulcanyon.com, and I can help you with any aspect of this that you may have had a, had a hard time with. So just to show you some of the basic capabilities that are out there, when you combine things like dates and times and VLOOKUP and macros and all the different cool things that you can do that in and of themselves are fairly simple. Uh, you put them all together and you have a very usable utility here uh, that you can use throughout Excel just by putting these things together. That's a big boom shakalaka from Rob Hamilton here at Soul Canyon Training and Development. Once again, if you have any trouble, please let me know. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Goodbye.